I failed my NCLEX. This statement I am hearing way too often right now. Did you know that over 23,000 student nurses failed their NCLEX exam in 2020? That is over 13% of students who took it on their first attempt. Are you watching this video because you failed your NCLEX exam or you're scared of failing your NCLEX exam? If so, this video is for you. In today's video, I will be giving you resources to use that will help tremendously in studying for your NCLEX exam and giving you five pointers on how to study and what to study for your NCLEX exam. So if you failed your NCLEX exam or if you're scared of failing your NCLEX exam, watch this video because here is what to do. But before we get further into it, give this video a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and hit that little notification bell down below. Other than that, let's get into it. First off, I do want to say, if you failed your NCLEX exam, do not lose hope. This is a very challenging exam and there might have been many factors that led into this result for you. With that being said, I want you to think back to your studying habits and think back to why you think you may not have passed. Was it that you spent too much time studying or not enough time studying or maybe you were memorizing the information and not actually learning the information. Regardless of what it may have been, do not fall into the trap of thinking it was somebody else's fault. When we are upset about something, it can be so easy to blame somebody else for our shortcomings or for something that just didn't fan out how we wanted it to go. The problem with thinking like this when it comes to the NCLEX exam is mentally that thought is very, very hard to overcome. And here is an example. I have spoken to students recently that did not pass their NCLEX exam and that were set in this mindset. And that mindset was hindering their further studying. They were fixated on that person or that institution that caused them to fail the NCLEX exam. But at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to study the information that we need to study and learn the information that we do not know as well. So that is leading me into tip number one today. My first tip for you is to take the comprehensive exam. Now there are so many resources out there that offer comprehensive exams. I personally took the comprehensive exam out of a Lippincott book and I found that tremendously helpful. Not only did I take the comprehensive exam out of a Lippincott book, but also Davis's Med Surge Success Book. Both links to those books are in the description below. But why is this important? Why am I recommending this to you? By taking a comprehensive exam, this allows you to see where you are the weakest and where you are the strongest. And you'll want to focus more on those weak spots. That's where you'll want to spend the majority of your time studying. So if you did not take a comprehensive exam prior to taking your NCLEX, do it before you take your second round NCLEX. And of course, you still do want to study those areas that you are the strongest at, but you won't want to spend as much time in those areas. You want to spend more time in the weak areas. Which leads me into my second pointer for you, and that is time. I've heard it said that you must do 100 questions every single day or study for at least two hours a day for an NCLEX exam, and that's false. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I was taught that everybody learns information differently and everyone studies differently. And I was that student who definitely studied differently. 100 questions a day is completely overwhelming to even think about doing that personally. And I know that would have taken me a few hours definitely a few hours. I could easily spend five to eight minutes on one question when I was studying. Now you may need five hours a day to study the information, or you may need five 45 minute study sessions and taking breaks in between those sessions. Don't get caught up with what somebody told you on how much time you need to study for the NCLEX because it is different for everyone. Wanna know how many questions I did a day? Hmm maybe 20 to 30. Want to know why? Because this actually allowed me to review the information and learn the information. 
I wasn't going from, oh my goodness, I need to do 100 questions, let me go really, really fast and memorize, right, keyword memorize, rather than let me take my time and learn the information so that I will actually remember it rather than memorizing information which can be easily forgotten. I was able to break down each question and really hone into what I did not know. So you will want to study to learn the information and not study to memorize the information. Now I made up songs to remember information and I still use them to this day and I use them for the NCLEX exam. I made up a song for tachycardia, for example. I put this to a tune of an old cheer that I did in high school and it goes, tacky is my patient, heart failure is my cause, JVDs, S3s and crackles, adenazine and dilantazem, adenazine and dilantazem. Like I said, I learned a lot differently. Another one, red man in the van. What does that even mean? Well, vancomycin can cause red man syndrome. Red man in the van, red man syndrome in the van, vancomycin, or vancomycin, but V-A-N, red man in the van. I have more, but I won't put you through that misery. All right, and my last tip before I give you resources to use for studying for NCLEX would be, if you plan, of course, on retaking your NCLEX exam, do not wait a long time to retake. There are studies out there that say the longer you wait from graduating nursing school to retake your NCLEX, or the longer out you are from graduating nursing school, the harder it will be to pass your NCLEX exam. I suggest for those of you who have not taken the NCLEX yet to take it about a month out from graduating nursing school to a month and a half out. And if you are retaking it, go with that same time frame. Take one more month to study because now you are going to study to learn the information, not memorize the information, and retake your NCLEX about a month and a half after you didn't pass the last one. I have seen some people try to take NCLEX two to three years after graduating nursing school, and I personally have never seen anyone be successful in that. So those are my five tips for you all, but let's get into the resources that I am recommending that you use to study for NCLEX. Like I said, I used two books, and I used these in nursing school as well, Davis's Med Surge Success, that is linked below. I still have this book. I still read it sometimes. Sometimes I take content out of there and put it into videos for you all. And then I used, I believe it was Lippincott. It was a red and white book. I don't think they make it anymore because it's an older generation. I think I purchased that in 2014. But I used that and I did the comprehensive exam in the back. I was able to focus on those weak spots, but also study the strong spots too. But my favorite that I used that I could carry with me everywhere because I was not carrying a book with me was NCLEX Mastery. Now at the time, my friends could carry it. I couldn't carry it. I didn't have a smartphone back then. <laughs> yes, I did not have a smartphone in college. I'm a little old school. But NCLEX Mastery, you can do it on the computer or you can get the app. On NCLEX Mastery, they actually have old NCLEX questions that is now on the app and that you can practice. There is over, I think, 5,000 NCLEX questions on this app and you can take a comprehensive test on this app. NCLEX Mastery also states that if you do not pass your NCLEX, you'll get double your money back. So you can find a link to NCLEX Mastery below as well and hey, you can receive 10% off as well if you use the link below. So those are the three resources that I recommend because those are the three that I used for NCLEX. There is a wide variety of other resources out there, UWorld, ATI, Kaplan, another gentleman on YouTube I've heard about, Ed, I personally have not used those so I'm not going to recommend them. I'm only recommending the ones that I have used. Really it comes down to are you studying to learn the information or are you studying to memorize the information? With so many resources out there, there is so much information out there, which is a great thing, but you have to be studying the right way. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or comment below. I would love to help you in any way possible that I can. Other than that, 
That is it for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a great week and get studying. See you everyone.